All right. Errol Spence Jr., Sean Porter, about to get it crackalating in September in Los Angeles. We're going to talk about that and what we're going to, what we think is going to happen in that fight in this video. Also, going to talk a little Eastern European light heavyweights towards the end. So make sure you watch all the way through the video. All right. Welcome back to the channel, subscribers. And also, thank you so much to the Patreons. If you're not subscribed to the Patreon, please join the Patreon if you're a hardcore for non-international boxing channel subscriber when we talk about our social issues on the Patreon channel, for non's boxing and po excuse me, politics, business and politics. Also, definitely want to say thank you to everybody that donates on the super chat and and attends the live streams that we do Monday through Friday and on Sunday with OG Boxing Talk. Let's get into it. Errol Spence Jr., Sean Porter, at last, at last, at last. We know the fight is going to happen. We know where the fight is going to happen. That is going to be September. Uh, I believe they said the date was September 28th. And that's going to be in Los Angeles. Should be an absolutely terrific fight. Been a long road getting here because of the ducking. I believe the ducking and dodging in one of them. And then later on, a lot of you know hoopla about whether or not the contract was actually signed or what have you. But now we got it going. It's a unification fight in the welterweight division. I do believe that this is the first unification fight for the last two years, in the last two years for the welterweight division. The last one being when Keith, once upon a time Thurman, beat Danny Garcia to get the WBA and the WBC belt. And this time it is Errol Spence Jr. and Sean Porter getting a uh, fighting for the IBF belt. Uh, Sean Porter is fighting for a chance to get back the belt that he lost against Kel Special K Brook that Errol Spence Jr. took off Special K when he beat the brakes off of him in Sheffield, England. So now we got it going on. And we know that on September 29th or late September 28th, we're going to have once again a unified champion in the welterweight division. And hopefully that guy can move on and fight the winner of Manny Pac-Man, Pacquiao, and Keith once upon a time, once, Keith once upon a time, Thurman. Sarah Scam will stop dissing Keith Thurman. Once, one time Keith Thurman, which is taking place this week. So what do we think is going to happen in the Errol Spence Jr. versus Sean Porter fight? I think that it is going to be a good fight similar to the Sean Porter versus Kell Brook fight with the great exception of Sean Porter is going to get beat up a lot worse. Sean Porter, I think, is a very good fighter. He really likes when he's at his best and he's fighting in his in his signature style. He is a rough, rough, rugged, not borderline dirty. I would say, I, you know, I wanted to say borderline dirty, but no, he's a dirty fighter. He's, he wrestles, he mugs, he, you know, he's, he's just in there. His head is, he's coming in there with his head. He's throwing, you know, he's coming in there with his elbows. He's knocking you, grabbing you, pushing you back, all doing all that kind of stuff. That's when he's at his best. Now, in his last couple fights, he showed a tendency or ability to stay outside and box on the outside. Stay away. He did that very well with Danny Garcia. He also did that with, uh, with or your Danny's Ugas. And that led him to get uh, to win the fight. So he's got the ability to go between the two extremes. One, moving around, staying on the outside, jabbing, you know, boxing, showing his, his boxing skills. I put the boxing skills in quotation because there's a lot of skills. But when people say boxing skills, I think a lot of times they're talking about the skills that you'll typically see displayed in an amateur fight. He also has boxing skills, that rough and tumble, rugged, uh, you know, rugged mauling style, which can be effective in football and professional boxing. The thing that is the problem for him with Errol Spence Jr. is though, is that one Errol Spence Jr. is a south is a south is a southpaw, 
So it's going to be much harder for him to land that jab if he lands on the outside. But Errol Spence, on the other hand, is very accomplished at fighting and landing jabs on, on, on right-handers. Also, the coming inside and grabbing and holding and mauling, that's going to work to the advantage of Errol Spence Jr. Because Errol Spence Jr. likes to fight on the inside. If you're going to continually come in towards Errol Spence with that head and all of that type of stuff going on, you're going to eat several jabs on you. You're going to eat several jabs on the way in and you're going to eat a tremendous amount of body shots, not just to the not just to the sides, but to the middle of your chest, to your solar plexus, right to your heart, right to about to your heart, uppercuts to your heart. Errol Spence Jr. on that inside game, man, is just going to be an absolute wrecking ball for for Sean for Sean Porter. The only option that Sean Porter has is really to stay on the outside. And if he does that, he's going to wind up getting tracked down by Errol Spence because Errol Spence Jr. has got very, very fast feet. And I've seen, I would compare, and you guys can correct me. Let me know what you think in the comments section about this. But when during the last couple fights where I saw Sean Porter against Ugas and against Danny Garcia fighting on the outside, he kind of reminded me of a... Chris Algieri, right? He wasn't really setting his feet. It was just constant. It was just constant motion, you know, jab, jab, right hand, and move, jab, jab, right hand, and, and moved out. Um, a good, elusive fighter, somebody that was hard if somebody just wanted to walk him down and counter punch him. Because Ugas to me is like a counter punch, is a, was primarily waiting to counter. So whenever, um, uh, Sean Porter got on the outside, but he didn't throw punches. Ugas really couldn't do anything because Ugas was waiting to counter. And you really can't counter somebody that isn't throwing punches. Similar to the fight, the last fight that we saw for Luis Ortiz, I, I think it was, was a Christian Hamer. Right? The people said that Luis Ortiz, the counter puncher, who was a counter puncher, had problems with Christian Hamer because Christian Hamer wasn't throwing punches. So there's really nothing for him to counter on. It was just kind of waiting around till he found till he found that hole. That hole really didn't ever really show up for Ugas, but Ugas was tracking him down and was able to do things whenever, whenever Porter let his, you know, whenever Porter really let his hands go, but it just didn't wind up working out for him. Errol Spence Jr.'s pursuit of a boxer, uh, of a guy is a lot different than Ugas because he's a because he take the lead. He's gonna be busy, he's gonna throw punches, he's not waiting on opportunity, he's not just waiting for you to give him an opportunity, he's actually looking for the opportunity. And on the other side, you have like the, the fight with Sean Porter with Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia is somebody that once again is waiting for, he's waiting for, for openings. He's trying to bait you into doing different things so that he can counter or so that he can, uh, who he can expose you and take advantage of you. Neither one of those guys are somebody that really is really going to press you, press you, press you. And that's what I see going on with going on with uh, with Errol Spence Jr. And I think Errol's getting a, is just getting a lot better. And he's the one that's wanted this fight. That's wanted the fight. Back when Sean Porter fought, and that's why I said I believe that Sean Porter was ducking out, was really kind of ducking this fight. Because when he won the fight against Danny Garcia, Errol Spence Jr. was there. Errol Spence Jr. was in the ring asking him about a fight next. Sean Porter had the opportunity, said while he was in the ring, yeah, we can do it, or something like that. He didn't say that specifically, but you guys can go back to the tape. It was an acknowledgement that, yeah, we can do it next. But then when he got to the press conference, it changed, you know, 15 minutes later, half hour later at the latest, he said, well, you know, if this fight doesn't happen next, it's not on me. You know, it's because of other things that are going on. Well, you know, hey, I don't have the ability to, to really see into the minds of people that who I don't whose names I don't know and who's you know who knows all I can look at is the fact that you said that you wanted to fight in the ring when you came back out half an hour later you said it might not it might not happen but you know to his credit the fight is happening now and Sean Porter is getting in the ring but it's just that hesitancy to make that fight the the hesitancy to make the fight the aggressive attitude that Errol Smith Jr. has about Sean Porter and wanting to beat Sean Porter. And just the fact that now, you know, time is really on the side of Errol Spence Jr. in this because Errol Spence Jr. is now even more confident. And I think, I think that in that the fight against Mikey Garcia will help him in a, in, in an ask in a way that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. 
I think the fight with Mikey Garcia, hopefully, has helped Errol Spence Jr. with the preparations of between fights. I think with Mikey Garcia in between the Carlos Ocampo fight, because that was, I do believe it was Carlos Ocampo that he fought before he fought Mikey Garcia. And yeah, because he fought, I think he fought in Dal Dallas two times. I think he fought Lamont Peterson. Then he fought Carlos Ocampo. And then he fought Mikey Garcia. I believe that's the order of the fights. He looked like he gained a lot of weight between the fight between that Carlos Ocampo fight and the and the Mikey Garcia fight in between. And I think that affected his endurance in the fight in the fight with Mikey Garcia. So him having learned from that because he acknowledged that it, in the preparation for Mikey Garcia could mean could he could, that he could participate a lot more in strength and conditioning, come in there a lot stronger. He clearly knows what to expect from Sean Porter. So it'll be a good fight. But I see Errol Smith Jr. winning it in, you know, kind of ugly fashion. So let me know what you think in the comment section, uh, who you got winning the fight and what happens next is Terrence Crawford next. And let me know. And with that, I'm out. Peace.